Here we have on the screen our final uh, poem for the day. This is, of course, by John Milton, and where he's talking on, he's, he's discussing his own blindness. Now, here is an exceptional poem from one of the older poets, the senior poets. We know that this was written approximately 1644. Milton was, of course, a man of authority. But, um, despite being a politician, was still obviously a God-fearing man, as you can see by the content of this poem. It was his ultimate ambition to serve God to the, rest, to the best of his ability. It's interesting to note also that he was married three times but never divorced. In those days, marriage was until death do you part. And this happened to him. Two of his first two wives died before he did. And he remarried each time, as is perfectly acceptable according to the, um, the Christian tradition. So here, let's take a look at this. Now, obviously, he started going blind, and he realized that it was going to be his um, fate for the rest of his life. But he didn't let it worry him too much. This is a guy who knows how to live life to the fullest. Let's read through this poem together. When I consider how my light is spent, ere half my days in this dark world and wide, and that one talent which is death to hide lodged with me useless, though my soul more bent, to serve there with my maker and present my true account, lest he returning chide. Doth God exact day labor, light denied? I fondly ask. But patience, to prevent that murmur, soon replies. God doth not need either man's work or his own gifts. Who best bear his mild yoke, they serve him best. His state is kingly, thousands at his bidding speed, and post o'er land and ocean without rest. They also serve who only stand and wait. Magnificent words of comfort. Isn't that brilliant? Here is a guy who should be falling into despondency and saying, it's just not the case. I too am a blessed person who can serve God to the best of my abilities. Let's take a look at that. We haven't got too much time left, so we can't spend a vast quantity of time on this. But let's just go through the poem, which does contain, I know, some difficult and archaic words. So, starting from the beginning. Now, the first thing to consider is what type of sonnet this is. You have your octave here, and you have your sestet here. And, of course, the octave always presents a problem, and the sestet presents the solution. This is, therefore, an Italian or Petrarchan form of sonnet. But let's take a look at the content. When I consider how my light, now please note, he doesn't talk about how his life is spent, how his light is spent. Isn't that brilliant? So he knows that his vision is fading. Air, before, there's your version of an uh, example of an archaic word. Air half my days in this dark world and wide. So his light is gone before he's finished half his days, right? in this dark world and wide. It's a big world when you can't see. And that one talent, which is sight, which is death to hide, which for most people would kill them, lodged with me useless. He's lost his sight, or he's losing his sight. And then he goes on to say, and though my soul more bent to serve there with my maker, I want to serve God, he says, with that talent. 
and present my true account. He's got to give an account of himself. Um, according to our belief as Christians, of course, we all stand before, throne, before the throne of God one day, what we call the great white throne judgment, to be judged. And the unbelievers are, of course, judged for their sins, and we, the believers, are judged according to the reward we will receive. Okay? And this is, of course, what Milton believed, as I do. Okay? But I stress that I am not telling you um, to believe this with me. You are free to choose to believe it with me. Revelation chapter 20. <laughs> okay. And then he says, lest he returning chide, all right, uh, in case he says, in return to me, doth God exact day labor, light denied? Does God expect people to work in the light of day if he does not allow them to see the light? No. It's a rhetorical question, that, but so brilliantly stated. I fondly ask, but patience, now please note here, patience, the personification, the capital letter makes this into a proper noun, and therefore patience is being treated as if it were a person. And patience to prevent. Excellent enjambment here. You see that this line does not end at the end of that line. The sentence continues from the octave into the sestet. You see that? Brilliant enjambment. And even though enjambment is being used there, you still have perfect rhyme. Ent. Ent. Okay. Let's move on. To prevent that murmur soon replies. And here is a philosophical lesson second to none. God does not, doth not need either man's work or his own gifts. <laughs> Isn't that brilliant? He says he doesn't need it. God is all powerful. <laughs> what would he need? What all that he wants is um, obedience and faithfulness. Who best bears his mild yoke, they serve him best. All right? His state is kingly. Thousands at his bidding speed and post o'er land and ocean without rest. God is a king. He's king of the universe. And he gives the orders. And thousands of people obey him. Right? And then finally, he ends off, please note the use of the colon, which tells us that a concluding thought is coming. They also serve who only stand and wait. All we are expected to do, according to Milton's belief, is that we serve God with all of the talents he has given us to the best of our ability, and we be faithful. That's what this poem is all about. Yes, there are difficult words used, but the meaning is so very clear. And once again, oh, do I really love this poem because it clarifies so much for me in my own spiritual life. I see that the clock is ticking, so we shall have to end off at this point. People, I have been invited to do um, further uh, series of lessons on poems. There are still five more to go. The list is in front of me here. It says, A Prayer for All My Countrymen, The Birth of Shaka, The Surf, Mementos, and Cheetah. Now, probably on Tuesday, I know Monday is a holiday, so probably on Tuesday, um, that second poetry presentation will take place, and I hope that you can join us for that. For today, remember, this was a quick revision of the poems studied by the grade 12s in the prescribed literature at first additional level. And really, the one thing with which I would leave you is to love the poems. Poetry is fantastic. And if you can develop a taste for poetry, 
not just to study it because you have to pass your exam, but if you can learn to appreciate it and learn to get that message from it and ask yourself, what is this teaching me? You are halfway there to successfully achieving a good result in your literature exam in November. Goodbye. I hope to speak to you again shortly.